Brothers and sisters, your host, the Apostle Reuben, with another short Bible lesson. The predestinate. You know, brothers and sisters, we're going to tell you like this. We should never have expected that this should be easy. Now, I'm at Romans 8, but I'm going to show you a scripture in Job real quick. I'm going to show you a scripture in Job. Job chapter 36. I want you to pay attention. Verse 8. And if they pay attention, be bound in fetters, and then be bound in fetters, and hold it in a cause of affliction. Who is this? You know, it's Israel. Then he showeth them their work and their transgression, which they have exceeded. Brothers and sisters, you have to exceed your transgressions. These Christians are locked down on a false teaching of grace. If they're not teaching you grace from both Testaments, it's a lie. Grace started all the way back in the time of Noah and Lot. Why can't we read that? Y'all fall for too many games, player. You got to exceed your transgressions. So when we exceed them, we study. We get past that normal, that crap they call Christianity. Y'all going to see it. Romans 8, 29. The predestined. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestined to be confident to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. The firstborn from what? Death. But I want you to look at this. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestined to be comforted in the image of his son. Let me show you what that means. The image, we're going to be comforted in the image of his son. The book of Psalm chapter 17. I want you to pay attention closely. Psalm 17, 15. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. Oh, yeah. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. We're going to awake with the likeness of God. David says, when I awake out of my sleep from death with thy, with thy likeness, that's to be confident in the image of his son. So the resurrection is going to happen to a people, right? Well, let's see. Romans again, 829. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestinate to be confident in the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, I want you to take a look at this, brethren. Brethren, not all nations, brethren. So let's swing on over. Romans chapter 9, verse 3. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. Paul's brethren and kinsmen, according to the flesh, were Israelites. So I want to show y'all something. Christians will never show you this. The book is called Romans, but I want you to look at Romans 2.17. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God. Wait a minute. Thou art called a Jew, but this is the book of Romans. Pay attention now. Thou art called a Jew. Well, Romans calling themselves Jews. Yes. The book of John, chapter 18. Let's get there real quick. John, chapter 18, verse 34. This is Christ talking to Pilate. The Messiah answered them, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? And Pilate answered, Am I a Jew, thine own nation? So one thing Romans wouldn't do is calling wasn't doing was calling themselves Jews. Nah, he wasn't doing that. And thine own nation, which means the Romans, the forefathers of Caucasians, wasn't even the same nation as the Jews. Waiting for y'all to snap out of it. I've been telling you. Let's go back. To Romans 2, verse 17. Behold, thou art called a Jew and restest in the law. Again, let's go to more proof. Acts chapter 18, just reading this. Acts chapter 18, verse 2. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. So they were Jews in Rome. And what were these Jews called? I'm taking you one step at a time. Now, pay attention, brothers and sisters. This is Paul. Let me read Acts 22 and 3. I just want you to see this. Paul says, I am verily a man which am a Jew born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia. That's in Rome. But he was a Jew born there. A Jew born there. So let's turn the page. Paul says this in Acts 22, 25. 
And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman? And uncondemned. Paul was a Roman because he was born there and he was a citizen. Now you know what the book of Romans is really saying. The book of Romans is written to the Jews in Rome, not all Romans. Once again, let's go here. Romans 2.17, Behold, thou art called a Jew and resteth in the law and makest thy boast of God. So he's writing to the Jews in Rome, not all Romans. First thing you need to understand right there. So when we go back to Romans chapter 8, Verse 29, for whom he did foreknew, he also predestined. Who did he foreknow? Let's skip around. See, the Christians ain't about this. Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, has God cast away his people? God forbid, for I am also an Israelite, the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Has God cast away his people who he foreknew? The only ones he foreknew was Israel. So you want proof to that. You want proof to that. Let's get the book of Deuteronomy. I'm going to tell y'all something, man. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. It can't touch us. Deuteronomy 9, verse 23. Likewise, when the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and possess the land which I have given you. Then you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God and believed him not. Ah, so when you sin, you don't believe in the Lord. Hmm. Nor hearken to his voice. Verse 24. Yet ye have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. See, God knew Israel. Did it change? Man, that's fly. You would experience know where I'm going. Amos 3. Amos 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. God knew Israel and Israel only. He has never known any other nation but Israel. In case I want to go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 10. Let's get there. Jeremiah 10, because I ain't got long now. Jeremiah 10, verse 25. Pour out thy fury upon the heathen, the Gentiles, that know thee not. I can stop right there. The Gentiles do not know God. They were never anywhere near our God. They served idols that know thee not. The Gentiles didn't know him. So when we go back, to Romans chapter 9, or 8, excuse me, Romans chapter 8. Let's go back. Verse 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also predestinated. Whom he knew before, whom God knew in the Old Testament, he predestinated. Mm -hmm. Not all nations. Didn't matter what. You Christians think because you use the name Jesus in love and no. The Bible says whom he foreknew, he also did predestinate. God knew one nation, and that's who he predestinated. Not all. You got these little white girls and white boys. God predestinated us. Boy, look at this. You brothers and sisters, y'all see the deception? And little black boys and black girls, oh, God predestinated us. God didn't predestinate all of nobody. He predestinated whom he foreknew. He predestinated whom did he know? Romans 11, verse 2. God has not cast away his people which he foreknew. God did not foreknow all nations. Again, just to put it in their face. Jeremiah, <laughs> you Christians are hard-headed. Jeremiah 10, verse 25. Pour out thy fur upon the heathen that know thee not. Pow. All these nations didn't know God. God predestinated whom he foreknew, which is Israel, not all nations. You see what they do in these Christian churches of democracy? They have your food. You can easily see that all nations are not predestined. When you read it. 
open I thine eyes that I might behold the wondrous works within thy law. Psalms 119, verse 18, player. Got to read the book to understand. If you never read it, forget about it.